I worked as a pathology assistant. My boss once found a 6-inch builder's nail in a chap's thigh. He would died on site after an accident but the nail was all healed over, even where it had nicked the bone so it must have been there a few years. UK gang member's mother died of a heart attack during a home invasion, aggregated burglary, 87 years old. Gang had burst in looking for drugs and money. No signs of assault but the circumstances required a full examination to be sure nothing suspicious had occurred. During the post-mortem two ounces of smack found in her anus. I was once in a mental health facility for only a short amount of time, and I met a woman whose daughter passed away from a drug overdose and had been upset at her for selling her grandmother's necklace for what she thought was drugs, but when the autopsy came back it was found in her stomach. Apparently she was swallowing the same necklace for years and I can imagine why someone would do that. Back in the 90s, I worked for the company that was contracted to move bodies for the coroner. We picked up the body of a lady who had worked as a tailor in her youth. When they did the post-mortem, there were several dressmaking pins and needles under her skin, mainly in her legs. There was also a pin lodged in her lung. Coroner thought she must have inhaled it. She'd suffered a pulmonary embolism back in the 60s which had forced her to retire. Maybe the pin was the cause of it. How she hadn't felt the pins or that none of them had been picked up on x-rays or scans she'd had in later life, I don't know. Cause of death was a stroke. I wouldn't necessarily say this is a weird thing, but once during an autopsy, I had just put the body onto the table on their stomach and the person had explosive poop. Luckily, the doc who was standing right beside them moved in time or else they would have been shot with poop. We didn't think it was ever going to stop. When I was a student I saw an autopsy of a man who had hanged himself. When we checked the main arteries in the heart he had a huge blockage. He was basically just about to have a huge heart attack so probably would have died anyway. Sorry pretty grim. While completing the post-autopsy repair for a gentleman, I found a plastic ladle tucked under the ribs. It was probably left by some poor autopsy technician who got yelled at for losing the good ladle. I offered to send it back to the coroner, but they never returned my calls. Wow, I've got a lot of stories for this one. We once had a homeless dude who OD'd on opiates, this comes in a lot. During the external exam, we removed his pants and they were just full of bacon. Like, at least 40 packs of bacon. Turns out he had shoplifted a ton of it then shot up in some rundown house and died with it all in his pants. It was pretty shocking. We also had a guy who took a bullet to the back of his head, execution style and after the x-rays determined the bullet was not in his head anymore, we couldn't find the exit wound anywhere. Once we took out the brain, we discovered it exited perfectly out of one of his nostrils leaving no trace of an external exit wound. This isn't an autopsy, but I work in a pathology lab and we get all the parts that are removed from a human during surgery. Tumors, moles, appendages, stones, kidney, bladder, gallbladder etc. One day a large, long, cylindrical stone was removed from a man's penis. We have to break the stone down to its chemical components so we can tell what it's predominantly made from, that is calcium. So we put this stone in solution, and as it dissolved we realized something was in the center. It was a big pen cap. There's no way it came from above. Five years ago an autopsy I viewed the patient was put down to have died from post-surgical complications from a colostomy, infection lead to sepsis and ended with moth. When they began the examination and looked they found some surgical tweezers left behind which was attributed to being cause of the infection because of how tucked away they were. I am unaware of what happened afterwards but it was definitely referred higher. One of the cadavers we learned from in med school had his sciatic nerve somehow passing through the middle of his piriformis muscle. It wasn't fused to the side of the muscle via scarring, it ran right through the middle of the muscle. His medical history was unknown, but we expected that sciatic nerve pain was probably on the list. I think of him when a patient doesn't respond to typical treatments for things. Sometimes people are built differently than everyone else and you have to think outside the box to figure out what's going on. My forensic medicine lectures took place in the department's Museum of Oddities. There are plenty of interesting items on display, but one particularly strange display caught my eye. It was an unlabeled cardboard box with 20-ish thin metal bars 10 centimeters, around 4 inches, long. One of the pathologists explained that the random pieces of metal were actually spoon handles which were found in a young woman's stomach. 
The remaining portion of the spoons was melted away by stomach acid. The woman was a patient in a psychiatric hospital in the 50s 60s and evidently had a tendency to swallow spoons, but her unusual diet had nothing to do with her cause of death, can't exactly remember what it was. On a more humorous note, the museum also features a variety of strange tattoos. My favorite was a tattoo on the left upper thigh of a soldier which read, Ladies only. An 88 year old grandma died of carbon monoxide poisoning. During the autopsy we couldn't open the back of the cranium. After much drilling we realized that her cranium was around 3 to 4 centimeters thick all the way around, leaving her with the smallest brain on a grown woman I've ever seen. She was fully functioning and never seemed affected by it in the slightest. I've never seen anything like it since. Spoke with a pathologist at a conference, during her training at the medical examiner's office, they were doing an autopsy on a body that was found by a river. They did a CT and something looked funny about his gut. When they opened him up, his stomach moved, it was a snake that had burrowed inside his body, it struck and bit one of the techs before they realized what was going on. 20-something year old woman said she was feeling sleepy and laid down on the couch. Five minutes later she was stone dead. When the pathologist cracked the chest, he found something nobody expected. Her heart was over 60% fat. I don't mean fat surrounding her heart, I mean the literal muscle cells of her heart had been replaced with fat cells. Apparently, she had a very extreme version of a genetic cardiomyopathy called ARVC. So much fat had replaced her cardiomyocytes, heart cells, that her heart simply lost contractile capability and just stopped beating. The pictures he shared were horrifying. It's like if you took a heart, cut half of it out and perfectly sculpted the half you cut out out of greasy, yellow fat, all the blood vessels were still running through the fatty half of the heart perfectly. It was wild. Brain aneurysm in a late 20s girl. Had a tattoo directly above her pubic region that said stay off the grass. Only tattoo on her body. Also had a full-blown trichobazor, same patient. We saved it. No history of mental health issues or seeking treatment for any mental health disorders. Just enjoyed eating her own hair. A professor was explaining to us the brain's ability to compensate and said there was a case, I believe the person had died of old age, of someone missing an entire hemisphere of the brain. In its place was one big tumor. There were no signs of symptoms of this throughout the patient's lifetime. Pennies. Hundreds of pennies, nearly six dollars worth inside the skin all over the arms and legs. Deceased was a hermit, lived alone, ordered out for every meal. Apparently he'd been surgically implanting pennies in his skin for years. No ducking clue why. My brother-in-law was in his early 60s and passed away from a heart attack. During his autopsy it was noted he only had one kidney. He never had a kidney removed and the only surgery he ever had was to have his appendix removed. And the mortician said that it was in fact removed and not just a birth defect. The appendix surgery happened when he was very young. Don't perform autopsies but I clerked for a public defender's office my senior year of college and was tasked with organizing the discovery of a murder case, including the autopsy photos. Guy was tortured and then killed with a pickaxe to the head on the side of a road. The next day they stole acetone from a hardware store and drenched the body, which doesn't work as well as the movies do. However, it does a phenomenal job at melting internal organs, particularly a brain whose skull has several puncture wounds. The brain soup is why you don't sneak a lunch while organizing discovery in a homicide case. One time we had an autopsy on a guy who had died abroad whilst on holiday. He'd already had an autopsy in his country of death. He needed another autopsy in his home country before his death could be registered, so that was our job. He had been embalmed and repatriated to us. Obviously by the time we received his body, his brain had already been removed and dissected, and the skull sutured closed. My colleague reopened the skull as we weren't sure of autopsy procedures in the country of death. The skull cavity was stuffed with underpants. A friend of mine works at the IML here in Brazil. One day he got a corpse of a dude who was into extreme BDSM. The death was caused by autoerotic asphyxiation while rubbing one out with a belt on his neck. The weird thing the friend found while examination was his body was the amount of weird piercings on his body and his dong slid in half, straight down the middle. It wasn't a injury because it was healed, it was a surgical cut. As